Okay, good morning. I'm uh, Alexandre Duclos from Siege. Uh, I'm going to present you uh, a project, a uh, mapping project in, to map the water distribution network in Freetown. It's a one-year project we are just finalizing, so I'm going to try to make it short. Um, just a word about Siege. Siege is specialized in mapping and virtual reality, based in Rabat since uh, 2012. We are about six people, uh, international team and customers, and you can check, our, check it out on uh, our website for more information. We are also a member of OpenStreetMap Morocco and OpenStreetMap Africa. So this project is about the physical mapping of the distribution system of uh, the Guma Valley Water Company, which will, runs the um, water networks in Freetown, and the, the data uh, will be used for modeling purposes and condition assessment purposes. So this is Guma Valley Water Company logo, and uh, the project has been funded by uh, MCCU. And uh, yes, and uh, Siege was subcontractor for the SMEG uh, company. Just a word about Freetown. Freetown is in uh, Sierra Leone in uh, uh, West Africa, small country in West Africa. Uh, it's very one of the most one of the poorest country of Africa, I think. It's suffered by uh, civil war and Ebola and landslides and uh, yeah, and try to recover from uh, all of this. It's also known for its beautiful uh, beaches on the bright side. On the bright side. So our mission in this mapping exercise was to map the pipes up to uh, 100 millimeter. So obviously everything is buried. So you can, as you can see, it's it's uh, quite difficult to find the pipes. We also mapped all the network components like hydrants, reservoirs, valves, and so on. So this is an hydrant, for example. We hopefully didn't have to map what we call the spaghetti pipes, which is all the informal network, which is uh, picked on the, on the Guma Valley Water P Company pipes. So we just mapped them uh, as a point of take point. And we also had to map the encroaching structures which are the constructions within one meter of the pipe network. So how did we do this? So we put it in place a 100% open source software architecture uh, with a Postgres, PostGIS database using QGIS for the QGIS software, uh, for the GIS software, and QFIL for the, for the data collection. Uh, all of this has to be mapped as plus or one meter level accuracy, so we used superior accuracy Genesis devices and uh, connected with Bluetooth uh, uh, taps. And we had up to 11 mappers mapping the water network at the same time. So how did we, how did we use the OpenStreetMap data to, to, to do this physical mapping exercise? Uh, first, as you can see on this picture, so the, the OpenStreetMap database in Freetown is very rich because a lot of uh, NGOs are working in, uh, in Freetown, so they are all using the OpenStreetMap database. So the, the, the OpenStreetMap uh, data is very rich on Freetown. So we use the OpenStreetMap data for two main purposes. First one was uh, the base map. So we used uh, OpenStreetMap data to embed the, data, the base map on the tabs. So we had 74 uh, data collection zones. Uh, we downloaded the OpenStreetMap database as raster, and we split this raster in these uh, 74 zones to be able to embed um, one data collection zone at a time on the tab because we had uh, like low capacity eight gigabytes uh, tabs so yes we needed a light uh, base maps and uh, the um, these pieces of base map were also used to delimitate the the um, the area to map for the mappers Second purpose was to map the encroaching structures of, uh, on the water network. So 
to map the encoaching structures, we had two, two ways to, to do this. First, when the, pap the mappers were on the, on the field, they were mapping and coaching parts of the pipes as line, uh, drawn, and uh, snapped on the pipes. As you can see, these are the blue pipes, and you have the uncoached parts in a range here. But as you can see also on this figure, we have pipe crossing buildings that have not been mapped on the field by the mappers. So second uh, way was to cross the pipes with the building layer in uh, OpenStreetMap. As you can see on this, on this figure, um, the OpenStreetMap data has to be checked and improved. So it's far to be perfect, as you can see on this, on this uh, image, with the Bing uh, image, uh, satellite image uh, as background. So to do so, we uh, hired, uh, we counted on uh, our OpenStreetMap Africa community, and we hired two use mappers from the Sierra Leone, from the Sierra Leone, Sierra Leonean chapter. So this is the, the methodology we, we used. So we had the data in the OpenStreetMap database, and we extracted the buildings private gardens, schools, hospitals, industrials, because uh, the purpose for Guma Valley Water Company is that if they have to uh, do an intervention on the pipe, if it's a private, uh, private property, so they have to ask the authorization. So it's not just about the buildings, but also the gardens, etc., etc. So we extracted all these items, and on the other side, we took the encroachments we had in the GIS database and also the pipes. And we crossed this data uh, with QGIS uh, to find the potential encroachments. So these potential encroachments, as we call them, have been um, qualified by the use mappers uh, using GOSM. And so we could um, bring up the verified encroachments into the GIS database, and the OpenStreetMap database has been improved uh, as the, the data has been checked and uh, modified by the use mappers. Second step of this methodology was to retrieve all these uh, confirmed encroachments and uh, to retrieve them into the GIS database. So here is uh, the, the result of this job, an extract of the database. So in, in purple, you have the encoaching structures we identified. So the two use mappers were trained on GOSM. They created uh, 6,600 buildings, and they modified more than 2,000. And at the end, we could retrieve 3,800 uh, encoaching structures on the water networks of Freetown. Thank you for your attention.